This video is sponsored by Brilliant. More on them later. Dolphins are fascinating animals and important stewards of our oceans. But despite their intelligence and our general fascination for these animals, there is still a lot that we don't know about them. And those who study them can face several difficulties. Especially if you're a marine biologist. But we'll talk about that in just a second. Hi, we have a doggo today. <laughs> when I was a kid, I had a dolphin phase. It was a bit too obsessive, if I'm gonna be honest. You could give me anything you wanted. As long as it had a dolphin, I would have been happy. <laughs> At some point, it was the only thing people ever gave me. I had to tell people, stop giving me stuff with dolphins. I don't like them anymore, okay? <laughs> Which was a lie. And I absolutely owe my choice of studying marine biology to whales and dolphins, even though I did choose a different career path afterwards. But not all of us did. There are those who do dedicate their lives to studying marine mammals. And I met up with one of them. Good morning. Here with a couple of friends of mine. About to look for some dolphins. Bon dia. Francisco is doing something over there. Francisco was a university colleague of mine who now dedicates his life to studying and observing marine mammals. To finance their research, he and his partner Andrea founded a dolphin tour company in Lisbon called Lisbon Dolphins. Together with a couple of friends of mine, I joined them on a three-hour tour to look for dolphins and talk to him about what it is like to work in this field. So we're just preparing the boat and then we'll go out. Unfortunately, it's not sunny, but the sea seems quite chill. Let's watch some dolphins. Nunca sei fazer com as mãos. What type of things do you study? What do you do now? Major ecology. Mm -hmm. uh, I like, I want ethology, but you know, the, um, my, my kind of dream research would be uh, dolphin linguistics. Making a dolphin dictionary. But of course, in, in reality, in the real world, uh, nobody cares about that, so there is no interest on, uh, on getting to, to that. Uh, uh, realm. You so money-wise, there's no funding. Except. There is no funding, and uh, it's something that is not easy. There was this one thing that happened in the 60s in which they tried to teach a dolphin English through, let's say, um, unconventional methods. If you decide to learn more about that, please proceed with caution. There's actually a book by Susan Casey called Voices of the Ocean. I recommend. It's actually pretty cool, and it talks a little bit about dolphin communication if that's something you're interested in. So I focus on ecology. That is. The, the, the most important, the kind of easy, easier part, and I try to push it for the behavior. So I would say behavior ecology and the demographics also. What species? So my little bottlenose dolphins. The bottlenose dolphins, even though they, I don't find them particularly beautiful or uh, nice. They're so beautiful though. Uh, there are others that are so much more. <laughs> Which ones? Uh, uh, my favorite is the Atlantic white sided dolphin. Bottlenose mm -hmm. are, are not the most beautiful dolphins, but uh, uh, behavior wise, they keep adding points and points and points. And, of course, in practical terms, uh, for the European Union, it's the, the important species. So mm -hmm. they are declared along with the, with the harbor porpoise. The, the species to go to study because uh, they are the ones that are more comfortable in uh, close to the coast and where we are it's close to the coast so the bottlenose and harbor porpoise is uh, the, the stations that we uh, are more prone to influence in negative ways so. according to european union legislation these are the two species that require the designation of special areas of conservation it is very important to determine areas where dolphins can be at peace by establishing marine protected areas. However, these are animals that can travel up to 100 kilometers per day. It can be complicated to create marine protected areas that include the entire area where the dolphins exist. So sometimes it makes more sense to protect their food. But to do this, we do need to understand their behavior, ecology and distribution. And understanding a lot of this is what Francisco has been doing. Why did you decide to start the company? I opened the company to be able to go to sea and the uh, empty boat makes no sense so just put some tourists 
it were the sponsors of the expeditions. <laughs> Do you collect data also while you're on the expeditions? And you use yes. also, you use the data from the expeditions? Yeah. And do you also go by yourself sometimes or...? Do yeah, yeah. Sometimes I, I go, especially if there is news of orcas around. And I don't have any anyone to go, I just go. Especially if I get a smaller boat, I for sure will go. Yeah. Uh, now this one is a little bit bigger. <laughs> What would you say are your most, well, the biggest difficulties and we already talked a little bit about funding, which is yeah. a major part. Yeah, because, uh, for example, my colleagues in the, that come from university, those who are uh, employed or uh, working on the area, normally it's uh, in marine biology at least, um, or aquatic, aquatic biology is better. The ones that are well employed or at least for some years are the ones that work in animals that we eat mm -hmm. resources or the opposite plagues plague yeah a dolphin is not you cannot eat dolphins yeah. so it's not a resource and it's not a plague even if it was it's protected so there is no direct or immediate interest on Contrary to what a lot of people think, funding for environmental research is relatively scarce, especially when you compare it to other fields of research. Especially when you're trying to study something that does not benefit humanity directly. It is a shame because we do depend on a healthy environment, humanity depends on a healthy environment, and the environment depends on all its parts to function properly, which includes dolphins and all its other species. If I'm going to be charitable, I do think that things are slowly changing. I think environmental research is being a bit more valuable nowadays than it was in the past but it's still this progress is happening is still a bit too slow in my opinion and a lot of people do this work out of passion like Francisco does a lot of people want to be uh, dolphin scientists and <laughs> whale scientists what would you tell them any suggestions don't do it <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> more or less do something else and keep that as a hobby for example marine biologists they never want them but they are hiring physicists mathematicians computer guys to study dolphins to study dolphins because for example dolphin or whale detection sound yeah. so it's a physicist that works on the field mm -hmm. but then has to be recognized you don't Nowadays, nobody is listening to sounds of the ocean. No, you pass an algorithm mm. that detects them, and then someone will just check if if it's okay, and you know, change the algorithm to be better uh, and find them, and not finding things that they are not or missing things that they are. So it's mathematicians and computer people mm. and the physicist is there to pass that to numbers and then it's analysis, analysis and um, even marine biologists that I know that are very well in the field they did master degrees in mathematics okay honestly if I would have to suggest something I would say try to find maybe a degree that combines computer science and biology I think that is a great mix not only for dolphin and whale studies but for all sorts of marine science studies because nowadays you will not go anywhere without some sort of computer work actually today's sponsor is perfect to learn some of these skills so be sure to check them out yeah the you're ocean. not gonna be going around swimming with dolphins which is what a lot no. of people think that's, <laughs> that's for filming Yes. A lot of other people that I, I knew that, oh, I wanted to be a marine biologist, but then I knew one that spent all the time in front of the computer. That's all. So, what other thing that we need to go there to, to filming. be filming? Yeah. So they went making documentaries and things like that, photography and filming. It's the way to, to go. Unfortunately, our expedition was devoid of dolphins, which apparently is uncommon. Francisco and Andrea were telling me that usually they spot dolphins like 98% of the time. They were probably camera shy and didn't want to appear on YouTube, I get that. I do want to end this video on a high note with something Francisco told me about dolphin species. They are not really threatened, threatened. Of course, the populations are the other thing. There is a lot of populations that are, that are going uh, disappearing. 
we are in risk of losing the, the vaquita, it's yeah. a porpoise that is on the way to go uh, from this world and uh, the lipot. The river uh, dolphins. Yeah, one of them. It's uh, virtually extinct. Aside from those two cases, most of them are pretty much okay. Most of the whales recovered from the whaling time. So, uh, no big concerns on that regard. Okay, thank you. Dolphins rule! I was really happy to hear this because we always hear about these negative stories about how the populations are declining, but we rarely hear good news. And this news only exists because of people like Francisco that work towards protecting these species. I think it's fantastic to understand that the work people do actually has an impact. So the passion in the end does amount to something. You know what else can save dolphin populations around the world? Learning more about the world. And there's no better way to do that than through Brilliant. Brilliant is a fun and interactive online learning platform. And the best way to learn about computer science, math, data science, and so on, from the comfort of wherever you want. To work in marine science, data analysis is absolutely necessary. There's really no way around it. And knowing the basics of computer science is also a huge plus. Brilliant is a fantastic way to get started in any of those fields or to improve what you already know. Me, for example, I've been using it to keep myself updated on statistics. It has thousands of lessons for every level of knowledge and understanding, from foundational to advanced. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash cnme or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Don't miss this opportunity. Thank you very much, Brilliant, for sponsoring today's video. And thank you very much for watching and all my Patreons for supporting what I do here.